the respite period. The dynamic which occurs between a narcissist and the intimate partner, primary source, boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, wife, cohab partner, means that when the sustained devaluation occurs, and that always occurs with an intimate partner primary source, there will also come with it the respite period. The period of devaluation will feel like an ongoing onslaught against you as the various methods of manipulation are deployed against you, either consciously or more usually unconsciously by the narcissist. It cannot be an unending assault, for no matter how tempting it may be, to keep exacting the negative fuel from you as a consequence of your tears, your fear, your frustration, your anger, there is only so much that you can sustain before you decide that enough is enough and therefore you escape us. Bringing about such a swift cessation of our primary source of the prime aims is naturally contrary to our needs, and therefore the abusive regime must be rationed in order to provide for the maximum return. Furthermore, if we were to maintain a permanent state of abuse against you with a sustained devaluation period that had no respite, then we would also bring about your failure to function as a reliable appliance far sooner. Of course, this does happen with regard to certain dynamics, but it is relatively unusual. Either you would break under the onslaught, or you would eventually become desensitized to it, and no matter how hard we try to up the ante, it wouldn't have the same effect. Whether broken or desensitized, such a condition results in the interruption to our control and fuel provision, and that mustn't occur. To avoid this happening, our narcissism caters for the provision of various periods of respite during the sustained devaluation. This is what creates the roller coaster effect, the push and pull, the up and down, that many of you are familiar with. This is what creates the sensation of being strapped into that roller coaster with no capacity to control its direction or speed. You'll be subjected to a silent treatment out of nowhere. One moment you're relaxing on a Sunday afternoon after a pleasant lunch, and then you ask us what you believe is an innocent question. You don't receive an answer. You ask again, in case we haven't heard, but we remain reading the newspaper. You ask a third time. We fold down a section of the newspaper so that we may peer at you from behind it as that ice-cold glare forms. You are immediately taken back, at, taken aback, and your look of hurt and confusion provides us with fuel and signals that we have control. You ask us what is the matter. You receive silence. You ask again. Once more, you receive silence. You get up and come over to us and keep asking what is wrong. What is it that you have said? Please will we talk to you? More silence. You replay the day so far in your mind, and then you engage in asking us whether asking us whether when you did this was that or was it this or something else that has upset us. Or perhaps when you said something else, is this what has brought this silence on? We, of course, provide you with no clues, we provide you with no answers, and your anxiety increases. You move away from us, desperate to know what it is that has caused the sudden silence, but you become wary of irritating us further. You decide to try and do something nice for us and fix a drink, but that is left untouched. And then when you next return to the living room, we've vanished. You call out through the house and search through it, but we cannot be found. Our car has gone from the driveway, and you ring our mobile phone. It rings, but there is no answer. You keep trying, and you also send text messages, but there comes no response. This lasts a day, possibly more, and throughout this, your anxiety and worry has heightened. All the while, we receive fuel, we're asserting control, and, invariably, we'll be cultivating a secondary source in our absence. 
We then walk back into the house, maybe hours later, possibly the next day, and act as if nothing has happened and smile at you. We are able to do this because of our compartmentalization. Unbeknownst to you, you threatened the narcissist's control, which resulted in the imposition of a silent period, silent treatment, and an absent one. It started as present, but the all-continued badgering of the narcissist, the provision of fuel, albeit by challenge, by keep asking the narcissist what was wrong, resulted in the narcissist then shifting to an absent silent treatment and through withdrawal, asserted control over you that way. The narcissist then, in essence, forgot about you and focused elsewhere with regard to the gathering of fuel. Of course, your telephone calls and texts caused you to come back on the radar with the result that more fuel was received and the narcissist asserted control over you by continuing to ignore you. Thereafter, the narcissist returns and control is understood to have been obtained and your earlier offence dismissed, forgotten about, it has evaporated. You, of course, are relieved when the narcissist returns, and we see the relief flood across your face and the tears of joy welling in your eyes, and yet more fuel is provided to us. We hold out our arms, and like the child being granted access again to a once angry parent, you dart into them, the surge of emotion rippling across you as you feel relieved, delighted, and happy. This cessation of the silent treatment, or any other form of abusive manipulation that we deploy, during the devaluation stage, doesn't end there. We take it further. We now give you the respite period. We grant you a return to the golden period, albeit briefly, so that not only are you relieved that the horrible silent treatment has ended, you become elated that this wonderful period has returned. We treat you like we once did during the seduction, telling you how much we love you, we perhaps buy you a gift. We help out around the house and arrange to take you somewhere special for dinner. There's no silent treatment, no insult, no nasty words. You do not fully understand what has happened in terms of why we have suddenly become nice to you. And invariably you might think, perhaps he feels guilty about the way that he was treating me. Perhaps he just needed some time apart from me, and he's been able to work a few things out. I'm not going to question it, I don't want to spoil it, I don't want to cause a problem, I want to be able to enjoy the fact that he's being nice to me. And of course, what you don't realise is that you were painted black, you received the sign of treatment, control was asserted, and then when the narcissist has returned, quite possibly because somebody else has become painted black, you become painted white, and you are granted the respite period. Understand that it is only the greater narcissist and the ultra that will consciously ration the abuse to ensure that you're pushed to the edge, but not over it. With regard to lesser and mid-range narcissists, the imposition of the respite period is undertaken unconsciously. And this is sometimes where there is a failing on that less evolved narcissism, which results in the respite period perhaps not being granted soon enough, so that the narcissist, is pushed, the narcissist pushes the victim into a position of collapse, or potentially escape. The respite period arises as a consequence of Either you becoming painted white again as a consequence of some being, someone else being painted black, or a recognition by the narcissism that there is a risk to control by continued sustained devaluation, and therefore there is a shift to benign manipulation instead. It's a little bit like we've grabbed hold of you and we're holding you underwater. That gives us control. Your struggling gives us fuel. Uh, but if the narcissist's narcissism isn't careful, you'll drown, and then you are a defunct appliance and no good to us. The key to it is to take you to the brink of passing out, and then hauling you from the water, toweling you down, giving you a hot mug of cocoa, letting you feel that everything's all right again, and then shoving you straight back into the vat of cold water once again. In and out, up and down. Some narcissists, of course, their narcissism operates so that you end up being held underwater for too long, and you do indeed drown.
The continuance of this respite period brings with it all of the benign manipulations and understand that's what they are because they are being used by a narcissist. It might be that night we take you out or we make love to you in that delicious way once again and you end up sleeping soundly, feeling safe and secure once again. You invariably give yourself a pat on the back for having endured the difficult period of our silent treatment because it has been worth it in the end. The golden period has come back. Well done you. You managed to secure it, didn't you? You gently scold yourself for having even been worried and rationalise that we obviously needed some space or it was a reaction to being under some considerable stress at work, for instance. You may even have asked us about why we disappeared. And if you do do so, taking the risk of upsetting matters again, you will not have received the truth. You'll have been given some plausible platitudes such as, oh, I have a lot on my mind and I needed room to think, or I had to get out before something terrible happened between us, or I just needed some space to breathe. Things have been very intense for me as of late. These are just excuses that is utilised by the narcissist. And, of course, your high emotional thinking and your forgiving nature because of your empathic trait of compassion and the desire to heal and fix means that you fall for it. The fact that we are back and the golden period is in place means all is well, and you don't want to do anything to jeopardise that by subjecting us to some kind of inquisition. Indeed, notwithstanding your truth-seeking trait, where there are times that despite your, that you need to know, you decide that it's better to ask nothing, and instead enjoy the fact that we have come back. We, of course, through our compartmentalization, absence of remorse, no guilt and no conscience, behave as if nothing has happened. Peace, of course, is so much better than war, and you're perfectly content to accept the fact that we behave as if nothing has occurred because it is such a golden peace. Whether it is the silent treatment, shouting at you, criticizing you, intimidating you, messing about with other people, or all of those things, we will call a halt, which to you there seems to be no logic to. With regard to the devaluing behaviour, as and when our narcissism sees fit, and in so doing, we temporarily end the awful treatment by providing you with respite. The respite prevents you from upping sticks, it prevents you from failing to function, it maintains a source of fuel, it allows us to assert control. This respite provides the contrast so that the positive fuel arising from your joy, delight and relief is powerful indeed. It also provides the contrast for when the devaluation will commence again. It's the peaks and the troughs, the ups and the downs. Moreover, this act of apparent kindness, and is one which is scattered throughout the devaluation period as a whole, continues to bind you to us. You feel relief. You also know that when the abuse begins, that if you just hang in there and try to work things out, the golden period will invariably come back once again, and you just have to wait and keep working hard to recover it. You are duped into thinking that its restitution is as a consequence of your clingability and something that you have done to please us. It is not. It is down to our decision, governed by factors that I've mentioned earlier. You may as well, you may as well roll a die, and the numbers will equate to the number of weeks of abuse that you'll endure before we switch and provide you with such respite. Just like the terrorist who takes civilians hostage and frightens and beats them, he will then show an act of kindness by allowing the captive to shower or to make a call to a relative. The captive then feels warmth towards their captor, despite what they are doing to the captive overall, and this engenders hope. Another misleading manipulation that this small act of kindness will be exhibited if the captor is kept on side. You are captive to our narcissistic wiles, and just like a hostage, you will await these moments of tenderness, kindness, and the return of the golden period. You will do what you can to keep us on side, so that they can return, because we have imbued you with the hope, which is another form of manipulation, that the golden period will return. Accordingly, you are controlled and bound to us, and this will allow us to continue the extraction, extraction of fuel. This has to happen, for the contrast is required to allow the devaluation to be protracted and to continue to provide further fuel. You are duped into believing that you can influence us to cause the restoration of the golden period and keep it in place. You cannot. 
the respite that is provided is as a consequence of our needs. And the reality is that it will only ever be a brief period of rejoicing. It might be a day, it might be a week, it might even be a month, but it will end and you will return to devaluation. That is the dynamic between narcissist and intimate partner primary source during the sustained devaluation period. Devaluation, respite. Devaluation, respite. And then this will either continue until you or the narcissist die, you escape, or the narcissist disengages from you. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.